think I've mentioned this collection or this brand before. favorite time of year it's the time that we dive in to the runways the trends and all the things I'm loving for fall welcome to my closet my new home base to talk all things always play dress up and like I said one of my favorite things to do is dive in to each new season's runways the trends the inspirations and this season we're going to talk about a few highlighted trends that I saw a lot of and that I'm really loving and really look through the inspirations from the runways, ways that I've worn it in the past, and even some archived vintage images to inspire that trend that's happening right now. We're also going to chat quickly about four of my favorite collections, mm, actually five of my favorite collections from this fall, and then next month we're gonna dive into those on a whole nother level, but we're gonna to touch on them today. The first trend that we're going to jump into is something that I started touching on last week with one of my closet staples, and that's the return of 50s inspired dressing, and in particular, the full skirt with the nipped in waist. I went and searched out my new version that I am so excited about, and I already have a few in my closet that I love to work with, but we definitely saw a lot of these walking down the runways for fall, and I am craving all of that classic dressing and mixing it up with some unexpected elements. A few of the collections that really highlighted this look were Dior as usual. I feel like Dior always has some of that 50 silhouette. We see the more dramatic maxi full length skirts, the really nipped in waists. I loved their use of button down shirts and tights with Mary Janes and then adding in some leather. And there's a cool mix of kind of dark romanticism with that very classic feminine silhouette of the 50s. I also really loved Bottega Veneta's version of this in the form of dresses. So those 1950s dresses with the, you know, a little bit bolder shoulder really nipping in at the waist and then that full skirt that really almost hits at the ankle. There's something so sophisticated and chic about these dresses. I really love how Balmain used the 50s trends in their collection as well, even with some incredible hats. You know I love a great hat. So more pillbox. I think of almost Jackie Onassis, but with the, you know, 50s skirt, but some of those really chic ladylike details. And I'm a big fan of this trend. I've been wearing this for years and I really do think if you're someone who loves to shop vintage, you can always find such great, beautiful versions of the 1950s skirt. I found the one that we recently went out and hunted for, but then I've collected a few over the years and I love this navy version that I have that has the scalloped edges and I've worn it in the summer, but I definitely will continue to wear it into the fall. I found this metallic silver version that I love because it has this voluminous, really light airiness to it that reminds me a little bit of Simone Rocha, but with that mindset of the 1950s, you know, and then nipping in the waist, wearing it with some sweaters this season and really playing off of that silhouette. And we can't forget the number one icon here of each own style, which is Carrie Bradshaw. She is always wearing the 1950s silhouette. And I love how she mixed it in with menswear, with trench coats. I also loved in the new series how she wore it with a dress opened up and a shirt underneath and a big straw hat. And if you're looking for somebody with inspiration for this look, you should definitely check out Jenny Walton. She's been on you know, the fashion scene, the street style scene for a really long time and is an illustrator. She is always wearing that 1950 silhouette and I feel like she's a great representation of the look and you can get so much inspiration in different ways that she wears it. I always think of Audrey Hepburn when I see her style, but she gives like a new modern twist to everything. And this is a little bit of the departure from the very chic tailored version of the 50s, but Molly Goddard, did all these really poofy, beautiful, 
you know, 1950s full tulle skirts and dresses. And I just loved it. It felt so playful and whimsical. And she paired it with, you know, striped knits and added just little ballet flats to it. So I, I love that take on the 1950s that feels a little more almost like a girl in a dress up closet and she's grabbed out the petticoats and she's just throwing them on with everything. Moving on to something else that I'm loving which has been happening since last season and I think I even talked about this last fall but it's definitely still happening and that is the skirt over pants. This has been a trend since the 1980s and it's something I've played with since maybe the early 2000s is probably when I started to play with it but it's having a moment this season and I just think it's such a fun way to layer your clothes. On the runways we saw this a lot at Givenchy. This had kind of a cool tough moto spin on this trend seeing a lot of like dark tones layered on top of each other with cool metal details and lots of different lengths of skirts, skirts with slits in them and then layered over pants. And then over at Chanel, we're seeing more of a tweed version of it, which I just think is so much fun. I love this tweed skirt layered over these tweed pants and then with a little ladylike tweed jacket. And then at Fendi, it was very sophisticated and streamlined with crisp white tailored skirts over crisp white tailored pants. So you really can take this so many different directions and play up on this trend. Some of the ways that I've worn it in the last year are going back to a video that I did last season about skirt over pants. I did a very quirky kind of menswear mix of this layering a suede black skirt over a print trouser pant and then I did a pussy bow blouse and I did an argyle sweater vest and my go-to pillbox hat for the fall. And then probably one of my favorite versions that I did on this trend was taking a skirt which I've seen a lot in different vintage markets is the tie skirt which is a bunch of ties paired together to create a skirt and I layered it over a 1970s tweed suit and then even added a tweed vest in between and just did a lot of layering and then did a crazy fun hat with it. So I think it's a great way to do a mix of prints as well and not get stuck in just that it needs to be one color or one texture. And it's also really fun to play with leather skirts over trousers. So this was a kind of midi length wrap leather skirt that I have and I took it in this matrix direction layering it over some pants that have a really great shine to them and then did a really you know early 2000s embellished tank with it and added some of the very Y2K shades but I love this because this feels more dressed up out to dinner going to a party and you can still work with that skirt over the pants and another print mixing you know concoction that I came up with was using this mixed print material wrap skirt again I think wrap skirts are great because you can kind of go high or low with them and layer them over the pant no matter you know what length you're working with and then I just did a lot of print mixing piling a bunch of different options together and even adding a tie and then one other way that I think is really fun is taking a tutu skirt which I've worn a few different ways taking this sheer tutu skirt that I found at Crossroads and I've layered it underneath a suit a polka dot suit and then I've also done it with some 1970s plaid pants and you know like a trench style jacket so that's another fun skirt that you can do over pants is using more of a tutu skirt and I really just have had a ton of fun playing with this trend as you can see I've worn this style a lot of different ways and I think this is a great way to do some fall layering and then you can layer the top up depending on the weather that you have outside and we have seen this of course in some really fun street style looks and then Carrie Bradshaw has even rocked this trend herself and I think it wouldn't be fall without some version of plaid and we are seeing a ton of tartan this season which I think is always around but this season there's definitely like a very bold punchy version of tartan happening everywhere in particular the queen Vivian Westwood was known for her tartan prints and so we saw a lot of tartan in the mix on the Vivian Westwood collection and then 
even. Dior did a little bit of some more muted tartan in their collection and Burberry, which is of course known for just beautiful plaids, had some really bold and gorgeous tartans walking down the runway. And there's just so much fun in a tartan print. I think this is just a great way to say hello fall. It just feels so fall. It feels so cozy. I love all of these mix of colorful tartan, even doing some mixed print tartan. So wearing different colors of the same tartan is a really fun way to explore this trend. Always throwing on some hats, styling it up with turtlenecks, just getting crazy and fun. I have a few great tartan pieces in my closet. I definitely feel like I need to add more, but definitely a standout is this pink it's a Scotta a tartan blazer that I've had for years and I love to style that up with other bold colors during the fall. And you can see here just some different ways that I've worn a tartan over the last year or so. And of course I love to reference Carrie Bradshaw and we've seen her wear tartan in the past in the Sex and City years and we've even seen some new versions of tartan in her repertoire in the And Just Like That series as well as Sarah Jessica Parker wearing it to the Met Ball. Oh my gosh, the Met Gala. And probably a favorite is this image here. I love this tartan corset layered over a tartan blouse. So even creating your own corset, if that's, you know, taking a tartan scarf and making it look like a corset over a tartan blouse could be a really fun way to do this. I chatted a little bit about this trend when I was doing what I wore in a week and I was styling up the skinny black tie, but that's something we're seeing a lot on the runways this fall and that's just the skinny tie or just ties in general, but in particular a black tie. And we saw this on Valentino a lot. I love how they popped a black tie on top of a bunch of red. And then at Dolce & Gabbana, it was very sophisticated with a white button down and a lot of, you know, black tailor pants, black jackets, just wearing that skinny black tie. Almost think of a waiter or a server wearing the black tie. And even at Dior, we saw a black tie and I think for years, that's been a big staple on their collection. And I love to play with a black tie. and. Even going back to how I wore it a few weeks ago right now where it's still warm outside, I wore it with a black corset and then just threw a black tie on my skin. But of course, referencing some of the, you know, kind of archive images from different editorials, black ties have been a styling accessory forever. And I really loved on Alexander McQueen's collection worn with more of a corset and a white button down and then the black tie tucked in to the corset. I think that's such a great little styling note to add into your fall dressing. And even just looking at some of these different images, there's so many ways even just how you wear the tie can make a difference. You can wear it really loose, you can wear it in the button down, really, you know, tied up tight, or, you know, tucked into your pants, tucked into your belt. So really just think about different ways to wear it versus just one way of you know putting it on with a button down. There's lots of ways to play and each one is going to make a different statement. And the last trend I want to talk about is definitely maybe more daring. I think it's really fun. I don't know exactly when or where I might wear it, but I just love it. It's the pantsless trend and it's just the micro short, which I think one reason I love this is because most of these looks are paired with a tight. And so I kind of like that. Maybe it's the dancer in me who wants to be in the ballet unitard and then you've got on your tight still. I don't know, something about that. I just really love it. I loved the version of it on the runways of Vivian Westwood with the really great suiting look all tucked in and then that pillbox hat with the bow on it and the boots. I don't know, it just was so cool. And Miu Miu of course did a lot of this. It's almost like this secretary look, but then as if her skirt is missing for some reason. And I like that there's tights pulled over. It's like it's underneath the little panties and then it's pulled over the sweater tucked into that. And I mean, think back to Carrie Bradshaw on the runway when she did her little runway show and she was wearing those little, you know, sequined panties with the blue, you know, jacket and the corset underneath. I don't know. It's fun. Maybe I'll explore it. If not, it's just a fun little inspiration 
there's something really magical about it. And then I'm going to brush by some of the collections that are my absolute favorites for fall because we're going to dive into these even more in October one by one. But we've got to get our brains buzzing, get excited, and if you want to do your own research, you can. But first we're going to start off with one of my favorites, which is Andreas, I cannot say his last name, Andreas Kronholler collection for Vivian Westwood. The collection definitely was an homage to Vivian herself and everything that she was known for with the corsets and the nipped waists and the ruffles, the crinolines, the off the shoulder, the knee high boots, just all the drama that is Vivian Westwood and just definitely some punk elements in there. But I every single time I see a collection I fall in love with it. I think there's the character in me that loves Vivian Westwood and she beat to her own drum and really just did her own thing since the very beginning and never really followed any trend. She just stayed true to who she was and there's so much drama and romance to every collection and this was exactly that and I loved some of the little styling details of the incredible hats, the amazing hair and makeup that went with the hats and I cannot wait to explore this collection further with you but for now let's just say it was incredible. Our next collection is one that I chatted about I think in the spring which was a favorite then and it's still a favorite and that is Kenzo. I think I love Kenzo because well, lately there's been an element of collegiate academic preppiness to it, but then with this really quirky playfulness. And that was what the whole collection was. And I love the mix of menswear and women's wear. I loved all the plaids. I love the capes. I love the knit. There's always hats involved. Whenever there's hats involved, I usually love it even more. And it feels like I might be at an Ivy League school and, you know, having magical days with crisp air outside drinking pumpkin spice lattes and cheering on maybe a rugby team. I don't know, but I love the collection and I'm excited to dive into that one in October. I don't think I've mentioned this collection or this brand before, or maybe it's been a while, but I loved Etro for fall. It is all the 1970s bohemia, but like very bohemian chic. I think of Bianca Jagger. There's a lot of mix of great prints. There's the wide like 70s pants. I loved the jackets with this kind of scoop detail to them, which I happen to have a tapestry blazer that has that style with some like toggle buttons. I am just a sucker for this entire collection. I loved the mix of tweeds and prints and colors and there's, you know, some pussy bow blouses in the mix and one detail that I noticed and I started using earlier this year was kind of taking a scarf and wrapping it around more of a choker style necklace and kind of having it in the back and then tying it here and letting it be almost like your choker is held up by a scarf. I just loved that detail from the runway show. So this one is a favorite and it's kind of made me fall in love again with that 1970s jet set vibe. This was a repeat collection for me. I probably talked about this in the spring, but it is the fall runway show for Bodie. And normally Bodie is a menswear brand, but Emily Bodie, who started the brand, has expanded into women's wear and fall was her first dive into women's wear. And I really, I love the men's wear and the women's wear, I'll wear it all. There's a sense of Americana to it. There's some influences of 1940s and even 1920s. I love the romantic feel of this collection and all the use of, it's like this great mix of feminine and masculine with bows and, you know, embellished pieces, but then great trouser pants and, I love the skull caps. I love the embroidered jackets. I want to be on the coast in, I don't know, Rhode Island, set in 1923, wearing this collection. That's what it makes me think of and wrapped up in a great quilt. So this is all the dreams 
I feel like I'm escaping into another world and in another time with this collection. And the last is Gucci, which Alessandro Michelle Mikel is no longer designing, which I loved what he did with Gucci and he made it so quirky and so fun. So I was so interested to see what was to come. And I really loved this fall collection. It is a departure. There is still some elements there that are from, you know, those Alessandro years, but it's definitely more I don't know, cool girl, sexy. It's got a 90s influence to it, but I still fell in love. I love this collection. I like, I don't know, I just like some of the styling details, the quirkiness, the use of colored tights with sheer almost slips over top those colored tights. I loved all the little sling back pointy toe pumps. I loved the, you know, empire waist full dresses and the weird you know asymmetry of like two big earrings over here and none over here I don't know I just I still I loved it I loved it I loved this collection I feel like maybe this is that super fabulous cool friend I feel like all of these all of these collections, and we're gonna maybe dive into that in October, feel like we're all a group of friends in college. I don't know what year, but they're in New England. And this one is like the little bit mysterious, smoky eyed, she was dancing all night, but always looks fabulous. It's a little bit messy. It's a little bit pulled together. There's glitz and glam on everything. There's something fall, probably falling off. I don't know. That's that's kind of the character that's starting to brew there. And um, I definitely feel like this collection is the girl who danced all night long. Woo! And is wildly free. I don't know. That's what I'm feeling. So I think I'm going to take all of these collections and create kind of characters from them with the trends and all the things uh, from the runways. I, I just love to think about clothing like you're dressing a different character every day. And I think that's why I love and think costume designers are the coolest because to me, they tell a story through clothing. And I think that's what I love about fashion is telling a story. I like to live outside reality with my clothing and just wear something as if I'm creating a character and I'm going into the world that I want to go into that day, no matter where I'm going. And so I think next month we will dive more into these collections and embrace those characters and thrift for them and vintage shop for them and style up some looks and I don't know, we're just going to play around with the characters, which I always love to do. So definitely tune in in October for all of that fun. But these are the inspirations, the trends, the runways, the collections that I love for fall. I think no matter what, I always come back to the ones to me that, like I said, are more character driven. They have more to them and they feel really playful and whimsical and that's what draws my eye and that's what gets me excited and I do love this boost every season with you know kind of diving into new inspirations and it just gets me excited and I go into my closet with new ideas and taking some of those you know trends that I mentioned in the beginning and using some of those little styling ideas to just refresh how we wear our clothes but I'm excited. I feel like I really have all the fall inspirations in my brain now and I can really play with them. And next week we are going to head to the thrift stores and see if we can find some of these ideas. But I can't wait. Let's bring on the fall. So thank you so much for watching today. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. I have new videos every single Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And finally, always play dress up. Bye!